y'all. This is Ginger DeVries, guest number 56 of the podcast, encouraging you today to use your position to broadcast God's love. God's word says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We pray this episode is an encouragement to you to go out and use your position to broadcast his love. From Scotto All Britain Studios, here's your host, Ricky. Hey everyone, and welcome to Broadcast His Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name because it's all about Jesus living life on purpose for him. Everything that we've been able to accomplish is because of God. Like everything we've been able to do and have and experience is because of God. He created everything. He's given us family and friends and a home and different things that are around you right now. You can just thank God for them. Thank God for what he's given you. And today we're going to talk about kids going back to school and we're going to pray for our students. We're going to pray for our teachers. And I was talking with a girlfriend about this, Risa Reeves. She's with us today. Hey, Risa. Bonjour. Bonjour. (laughs) Yes. So we are going to pray. She is the director of Haiti One by One Student Program. So how are you? I'm good. This is a good topic especially right now. Yes. Okay. Tell us a little bit about what you do, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, Just quickly, we we basically partner with churches in the U.S. primarily to churches in Haiti who have started schools. Um, 90% of schools exist in Haiti because of a church. Uh, There's not much of a public school system. And the ones that exist, you would not want to send a kid to. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Most, not all of them, but. Um, so basically, we we partner to raise up the funds to cover tuition costs, which is uh, because school is not free. And so, you know, less than 50% of the population gets to even attend school. And then once you even make it to high school, less than 5% finish. So the stats are pretty staggering. So we, the program is specifically to raise up sponsorships for students so that they can actually be in school, which it lifts a huge burden for families. Yeah, such a blessing. Right now in Haiti, it's August. Mm -hmm. Are they in school or out of school? So they literally just wrapped up school. I want to say the last week of June and some schools were last week, literally. Um, Some are probably still in session because of major derail um, with political insecurity and gang violence closed schools down. They got a really late start. And so the catch up was hard. And then there's exams that are being conducted this month to determine if students transition to the next level. So wow. It's behind, very behind, but hopefully they'll start back up in September as per the usual calendar. They're just going to have a shorter summer. Well, we will pray for them as they are in this transition of a shorter summer. I mean, what a bummer. What a bummer, I know. right? Well, I would say bummer, but you know, in Haiti, kids really love going to school. It's it's a whole different feel of going to school there. If you get the chance to go, it's I think kids would go to school year round there, honestly. Really? It's such a valued um opportunity. So, short summer, I mean, many families really rely on the school systems to have their kids you know, for food and education and just occupied for the day so they could work. So it's, yeah. it's maybe a relief that school summer is going to be a little break. They'll do fa- family stuff, but it's not too big of a deal that it won't be a long summer. I mean, that'll preach to us right there that kids are grateful yeah. to go to school in Haiti. Super great. <laughs> super great. It is such a uh, huge opportunity. Uh, it's a, a really gift to be able to go to school Yeah, in Haiti that's great. for sure. That's great. Yeah. What a gift. Um, Mm -hmm. We are going to pray, but first I wanted to ask you what Bible verse is encouraging you in this season. So I can't pinpoint exactly one, but the Proverbs three is trust in the Lord with all your heart. I mean, not on your own understanding, but Proverbs three, gosh, there it's so full of gold nuggets for students. So I've been kind of like chipping away at that. And I think when we pray, I just, Think about the wisdom that Solomon wrote this to pray for his son. So I think about all students, like as parents, as adults, we pray, you know, the the proverb of trusting in the Lord. And that really encompasses everything else. Yeah, that's so good. I mean, 
to be honest with you, we could pray this scripture over the um over the next school year if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, Trusting in the Lord. But if you really like each verse, I mean, I would encourage anybody look at Proverbs three. And if you're going to pray for your children and students, you could like focus in on just a, just a fun st- strategy, just focus in on one, one verse a day or something. Um, yeah. Because each of it just carries so much weight into praying for kids. Um, yeah. Praying for students progress and the way they pursue education um, the obstacles they face, the challenges and the battles that they're up against to find their own identity, their strengths, their weaknesses. And, you know, the battle is to just be who God made them to be. And how do they do that when, you know, at such vulnerable ages? Yeah. Verse 21 says, my child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Yes. Can I get an amen? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, and just like pray for wisdom in one of the yes. verses, um, you know, and it all just points back if if they're if they could find trust in the Lord with all their heart, leaning not on our own understanding, mm-hmm. you know, it would direct their path, and yeah. and that's really hard for all of us to do, but especially hard for an adolescent or middle and elementary students as they're just in the the buzz of school and lots of influence. Um, that surrounds him in yeah. school. Yeah. I mean, the word trust in the Lord with all your heart, do not depend on your own understanding, seek his will and all you do, and he will show you which path to take. So I have to like share this quick testimony. We're going to pray. And then yeah. after you pray, we'll uh, wrap up our conversation. And then I'm going to read all of Proverbs three. And if people want to like hang out, you know, Sweet. into that, they can pray that with me. But, um, so trust in the Lord with all your heart, Risa, I was chatting with you this week and I'm like, man, I've had three guests cancel like right before the (laughs) interview. And she's like, you know, my family will step in and we will help. And I was just like, oh my goodness, I love you. Thank you. And (laughs) it has been a time of just like trusting in the Lord and, and like going to one of my sisters, you being like, Hey, I'm like, I need some help. This is hard, you know? Mm. And, um, you coming on the podcast is, is really showing me which path to take because God is moving in you. So I just wanted for the person who's listening to just get that blessing of like, really trust in the Lord with all your heart. Like he has a plan for your life. And it's not a mistake that Reese is on today. It's not a mistake that this is coming out Mm -hmm. right before, before school starts. And we're talking about how kids in Haiti are grateful to go to school and that they have to pay to go to school. I just, Mm -hmm. I just think it's such a gift to have you on from God. So thank Mm -hmm. you. Thank you. You. I was just noted noting this like comment on Proverbs 3 5 um, trust over trend and I was thinking like sometimes we can trend can be many things right mm-hmm. we have our rhythm we have our schedule like you had cancellations my schedule is totally out of whack right now with summer um, the scramble and but I'm like I need to find trust before trend or routine because when it when it breaks we can get uncomfortable but that's you know it's usually an opportunity to trust and practice leaning in on to him and not our own plans and understanding of a schedule so yeah. for whatever that's worth and i think about trends with kids and their schedule it's important for kids especially to have a schedule but you know at the end of the day it is does not define everything <laughs> yeah it doesn't It doesn't, I mean, the kingdom work that we do is what matters. Yeah. Like the conversations we have with people about Jesus and that he's our hope and Mm -hmm. like saying that you're going to pray for someone and actually do it. Mm -hmm. That is the stuff that matters. You know, we're the only reason why Risa and I are here right now is just to encourage you to draw closer to Jesus. Like that's our heart in this is only Jesus because we know what a relationship with Jesus is like, and it's beautiful and it's pure. And God has given us everything that we need, everything. Like we don't Mm. need something on this earth besides Jesus to have life abundantly. And so, um, I don't know. I just, I just wanted to say that to encourage you because you're listening. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Listeners. (laughs) I mean, I think we're in the whirlwind right now of just the 
the summer and the expectations of like, we need to do this. We need to have that vacation. We have to, we have to visit these places. We got to fill the, the schedule with our kids or, yeah. um, you know, and those are, those are really luxury opportunities that many of the people in the world don't get. And yeah. I am grateful for that. I don't want to take advantage of that, but I can find myself getting caught in that rut and then losing sight of my need to be connected with God directly um, so that it makes more sense for me to apply wisdom in my day-to-day with my kids. And just with the approach of school coming up, it's a heavy weight for a lot of people. It's actually a relief to many people too. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of mamas out there. Yes. (laughs) They're excited. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, let's pray. Um, Risa, do you mind starting us off in prayer? Thank you. I'll keep it simple because I think the Lord heard our words for sure. But um, God, you know, our hearts and our mama hearts, our business hearts, our structure hearts, that you know, all the juggling that we do. Um, and you're so good to entrust us with these responsibilities and to steward these, these children and the students, um, or some of us are teachers. And, and, uh, when we think about students going to school, we just want to lift up the administration right now. Our counties have a high need for employment in the school districts. Um, and so we just lift those roles up, you, that you would fill them with the people and that you would prepare the hearts and the minds of all of those who've already stepped up to take on roles and who have been there in the trenches for years in education. Um, Lord, we know they give a lot of their time that is not compensated financially, but their hearts are in it and they trust in you. So I just pray that you would revive those hearts, keep them focused on the prize that you have for them, not in a paycheck, not in the student results or what pressures they get from their counties or state to report on. Um, God, would you protect the administration from manipulation of a system? Um, Would you just protect the students in that whirlwind of planning? Um, Would you just fill the gaps where it needs to be filled and it and would you provide we just ask you to provide your wisdom within those that you would put a hedge of protection around all of those that are there for the right reasons lord that you would guard the hearts and the minds of students who are going to be surrounded by so many ideas and influences of the world that are not of you yeah so we pray specifically for all those that those that are in the system and the families that are preparing for school who know you, that they would pray and intervene on behalf of the education system. Um, Lord, I especially pray that in Haiti. I know that I see it directly, your good hand in the midst of crisis, in the midst of gang violence. Yeah. Um, Lord, that exists here in the States, and but Lord, we just we know the education system is very powerful. That it's a tool for so many things, and um, Lord, it causes movements. But we pray that the Bible would be the strongest curriculum that exists around the education system. Lord, would you allow it to infiltrate our education and uh, take over? Lord, I pray that ultimately it is a takeover of hearts to know who you are. And we just pray for that for our children, for our um, teachers, that they would be comforted in that and um, that they would know that they are known um, uniquely and individually and that they are one person and there isn't another one just like them out there, that they are made for a purpose and their role in the system of their education circles is important and that you would use them and that they would know you. Um, And we just thank you for the privilege to pray, to pray out loud, to publicize this prayer. Lord, that alone is a gift that we could pray this and share among others in our culture. Um, We pray for those that have to be quiet about you because of laws in their country and restrictions. And so we lift them up too in the education systems. Um, Lord, infiltrate the hearts and the minds of those who can't speak out loud their heart, their their belief in you, Lord. Pray for courage and yes. um, and a joy 
to prepare for school and receive school. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That was so good. Thank you so much, Risa. Mm. Wow, wow, that was, wow. That was oh. not me. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll just tell you like the all the things that you prayed for. Like, thank you so much for praying that. And while we're recording this conversation, it is pouring down rain outside. Yeah. And so I just encourage for whoever's listening to this in this moment, just to like the rain sound, it's loud, but it's so beautiful. And, yeah. and God made the rain. And so I just encourage whoever is listening to this today, you know, when we leave uh, these podcast episodes, I always conti- or encourage people to continue the worship. You know, we're going to read Psalms three or not Psalms. We're going to read Proverbs three next. But just as we get to talking with Risa and just thank you so much for your time. I pray that people continue the worship today. Thanks, and- Ricky. You're welcome. Okay. So uh, go ahead and throw it on mute, Risa. And I'm okay. going to read Proverbs three. So this is about trusting in the Lord. This is the New Living Translation. And it says, my child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people and you will earn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and you're vast with overflow with good wine. My child, don't reject the Lord's discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you. For the Lord corrects those he loves just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. (laughs) Can I get an amen? (laughs) That is so good. Okay, verse 13. Joyful is the person who finds wisdom for the one who gains understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver, and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. She offers you long life in her right hand and riches and honor in her left. She will guide you down delightful paths. All her ways are satisfying. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Happy are those who hold her tightly. By wisdom, the Lord founded the earth. By understanding, he created the heavens. By this knowledge, the deep fountains of the earth burst forth and the dew settles beneath the night sky. My child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them for they will refresh your soul. They are like jewels on a necklace. They keep you safe on your way and your feet will not stumble. You can go to bed without fear. You will lie down and sleep soundly. You need not be afraid of sudden disaster or the destruction that comes upon the wicked. For the Lord is your security. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to help them. If you can help your neighbor now, don't say, come back tomorrow and then I'll help you. Don't plot harm against your neighbor. For those who live nearby, trust you. Don't pick a fight without reason when no one has done you harm. Don't envy violent people or copy their ways. Such wicked people are detestable to the Lord, but he offers his friendship to the godly. The Lord curses the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the upright. The Lord mocks the mockers, but is gracious to the humble. The wise inherit honor, but fools are put to shame. And so as we just wrap up this 
episode. I don't know if any of those verses really spoke to your heart. There were a couple of things I learned that I'm going to apply to my own business from um, hearing that proverb back. But I just pray that you all have a great school year. Um, If you have friends or family that are starting off school this year, uh, maybe if it's not even this week, the next week or the next week, I just pray a blessing over you. I pray for God's favor to be over you and your family. And I pray, I pray for God's favor over anyone who is following the Lord and seeking his will, who is anywhere around a school system, janitors, teachers, anyone who is involved in the school system, Lord, just give the people who are delighting in you your favor so that they may advance your kingdom work in these school systems. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Love you, girl. (laughs) Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to broadcast his love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders, to transform communities. God bless you guys and have a great day. Hey everyone, it's Erica with Glassy Day Studio, where we believe every broken, discarded, and disrupted thing will be reclaimed, restored, and redeemed by the one who created and calms the waves. Glassy Day jewelry is shaped from recycled surfboard resin and each design is named after a woman in the Bible. And 10% of every purchase supports foster care ministries. Check it out at glassydaystudio.com. And thanks for listening. And if this episode has drawn you closer to Christ, please share it with your friends and family or even one person that might find encouragement in the message and a deeper relationship with Christ. God bless and have a great week. This is amazing.